I wanted to, to share the story of this community and how it initially responded to the unfolding housing crisis all the way back in 2016. Now that that housing, land and housing team has grown now into three, three counties, I wanna tell the story of those earlier days and how it changed me. And the reason it changed me is because it changed my heart. It changed how I saw people on a one-to-one -one basis. It changed how I saw this collective we of Levin. And it changed how I saw how Levin interacts with the world. It gave me some beautiful experiences of how even in the midst of cynicism and doubt, we could come together and do something amazing. So for me, this, this action began with, uh, with something that stirred inside of me, this inner personal transformation. I got in touch with my own housing story and how it has had an impact on me, both spiritually and emotionally and on our family. We had that urban tumbleweed experience that so many other Portlanders share, bouncing around the city. And I continue to kind of bounce around the city to this day. I had moved several times in the span of a few years, having finally found this community, this neighborhood, and called it home. And yet, like many of our neighbors, we still lived under the specter of increased rent beyond our means. What did this mean for us? What did it mean for every other person in this community? What did it mean for Augie as he was in his second year of public school at the time? What did it mean for his classmates who were at that point living on the edge? Would their parents be able to stay in their housing situation and in their school? Would we be able to stay? Would Augie and I be able to stay in our housing situation? I began to understand the anxieties of people living in exile and felt that in my own bones, felt it in my heart, wandering the deserts, wandering these foreign places. And while we are called to acknowledge this very personal struggle, I was called to acknowledge that in my own life. I was also called to ex exit this, this, this wallow of my own grief and find someone else to join me and seek people of peace with whom I could vulnerably share my story. And so my story began to be connected with other people's stories on a one-to-one -one basis. And remember, that's how the organizing cycle uh, kind of gets its, gets its juices flowing as we start to have one-to-one -one conversations. And I began to hear other people's stories. I began to have conversations with other members of the community, not just this community, but people in the neighborhoods. And then my stories and other organizers' stories began to connect we began to see these stories have a depth and a breadth to them that we couldn't imagine before. And these stories began to collect and they became a we, a W-E. And our group took on richer aromas, aromas of culture and history. And then that we started to, to move into this inner communal transformation that, that was so beautiful to see that we started to form an identity as a coalition and as, as, as a Levin community around housing and sanctuary. As two to three gathered, and that became five to six, and then 15 to 20, and then 20 to 35. And we began to see a shift in language, of what we see as possible from, well, wouldn't it be great if this were to happen, to we have the power and the capacity to help make this happen. And it was in this phase that we discovered the important connection between injustice 
of the then current tiny home policy in the city, and then also Portland's lip service to being a sanctuary city, but not really looking out for the most vulnerable in our midst. Every gathering was grounded in spiritual and relational connection. Bonds were strengthened, love was shared. The internal conversation and connections began to spill over outward. And then the we of this community began to have conversations with the other we's out in the world. Our gathered community, this housing research action team, as it was called, then discovered other groups of people who have a stake and influence in getting more people into affordable housing and creating equitable and thriving neighborhoods. As a group, we participated in powerful conversations with neighborhood leaders, city council members, the mayor, and leaders of high capacity and nonprofit organizations. And we learn to pair our truth to power voices like those of the ancient prophets with our open and compassionate hearts like those of the ancient mystics. Powerful leaders were brought to their heart space and moved to tears. And our cynical hearts were broken open in this very space, in this very space where 200 people gathered as Levin adopted its own sanctuary policy and publicly asked, asked a city council member to make significant changes to housing policies regarding tiny homes. Do you remember that day? The cheers that erupted when the yeses were said? Our dream of a just and equitable future started to take shape with a chorus of yeses heard here in this very space. And if you just listen really closely, you can still hear them echoing around. Those yeses are trapped within the wood of the ceiling. I share this story not as just the greatest hits of what Levin past was like. I share it because none of that would have been possible without people in this room offering their gifts of time, energy, and resources. None of that would have happened without a generous spirit both physical and financial. People had to get through their own cynical and hardened hearts to experience the hope of not yet, but soon, and then yes. That organizing spiral has now expanded, as I said, into three counties. And while that spiral has outgrown these four walls, I wonder what heart seed is ready to crack open again with this group of folks. How will your generous spirits help to water that seed? That's my story.